I told you, I told you, expect those little special nuggets. And um, man, we started off strong with 109 Below. I'd like to bring up Sarah. I know she's, Sarah, are you still with us? Yep. Sarah Stewart, the producer of 109 Below. Um, how about extra round of applause for we just watched on screen? Uh, yeah, Angelica, Avela, are you coming up? <laughs> Come on up. I know it's not the most comfortable. I feel like we're sitting on the stoop up here, but we'll just, uh, hi. So nice to meet you. We'll get, uh, we'll get mics for you. Have a, have a, yeah, or we can just, you know, whatever's more, more comfortable. What's that? In Palmer Morris? Are we? So sorry. Yeah, yeah, thank you for coming. Okay, and uh, Obi Kaufman. Obi, you still in the house? Right here. Obi's been in the house for the past three days. He can He loves this place. <laughs> Obi Kaufman, everybody. I'm gonna shed uh, some. Nice to meet you. Okay. Scoot okay. Scoot that. Okay. okay. All right. By the way. Well, since we just finished what beautiful film, by the way, I think we can all attest. <laughs> Two films. Two films. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk about him on this side. Yeah, maybe because we're quite the speakers here. Just scoot a little this way. Yeah, just because I think we're. Yeah. Okay. Angelica, I want to. You're so brave, kind of sharing your story, but you, you know, you went on record in the movie talking about um, that unwillingness to want to share. And now, when you see something like this, maybe talk about the cathartic aspect and what it was like. You know, just. Letting it all out there <laughs> for people to, to kind of see you in, in every which way. Um, I want to say thank you for having us here. Um, I, when the film stopped, I kind of saw some people, you know, wiping their tears. So I just feel really honored that, you know, if they have any connection with me or hard times, that, you know, you're not alone. So it just felt really beautiful. <laughs> Indeed. Seems to be a recurring theme throughout um, every Coast Film Fest, but in terms of the connection with nature. So maybe you can share a little bit about um, once you got involved, what it does just for your for your psyche when times seem a bit tough. Maybe what you get. Um, for me, I do struggle um, a lot. There have been times when I've been depressed and I have really really bad anxiety. I grew up super shy. Um, but nature heals, and even the ladies that I hike with, like they don't know it, but we're all healing each other. And the outdoors just feels like home for me. So, um, I love it. I love to hear it. It's so good. And I think that everyone should give it a try. <laughs> yes. There's so many. There's so many benefits, and it's just good for your health. It's good for your your mental, emotional. I don't know. It's just there's yeah. so much that can come from it. You know, we got some good trails here in the Blue Belt, here in Laguna. Hit the Green Belt, the Blue Belt on the ocean side, but um, lots of good trails. Can I ask Palmer, you know, how this story found you or how you found the story and um, kind of what that process was like for you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Angelica, as they say, slid into my DMs. <laughs> really now? On Instagram. Oh, is that so? <laughs> okay. Interesting. Do you want to give some background on that? Um, I shot, wait, is it shoot my shot? <laughs> um, I was, I got picked with um, through Hike Syndicate and they supported me and um, gifted me all my gear to do my through hike and then they were asking me you know what are your plans for next year and I told them and they're like wow well we think you should make a pitch deck and maybe a short documentary I'm like I don't know how to do that <laughs> and I am on a mountain house ambassador team with Sonia and I saw her film Elevated it's it was wonderful she's a deaf climber she's incredible and I loved it and I'm like well if anyone is gonna work on this with me like maybe they'll give me a chance so I just was like hey and I poured my heart out and then they answered and he said yes and he helped me through everything yeah. 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 I think a lot of it too is it was interesting process because so often you know like 
there's a, often with documentary, if you, if you don't know the person or the story, there's a bit of uh, putting yourself out there as a filmmaker and actually like a bit of coaxing and kind of getting them to open up a little bit. But here is Angelica like, hey, how's it going? I'm Angelica. I have a story to tell. Like, that was totally different from any other uh, participant in a film I'd worked with before, but it immediately made me realize that like this person is here to take up the space she deserves. And I felt really privileged to be a part of part of that and making that happen. It's, yeah. uh, it's a story that deserves to be told, and we're so grateful that uh, you're willing to share. <laughs> um, speaking of finding the story or having the story find you, um, with 109 Below, that's something we kind of knew about. But to take the perspective of the, you know, the, the people that put everything out there to save others, how, how, did, the, how did the story kind of come to fruition and through the perspective of uh, the individual that you followed? So there was no um, sliding of DMs in my one. Is this yeah. ringing a lot? Is my microphone ringing? Is that okay? Yes. There you go. Okay. Mic's bad. Just, okay. just give her yours. Okay. Try that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's no sliding in DMs, unfortunately, on our one. Um, but the filmmakers, that our director, Nick, is incredible, um, and Ben over at Arterix, both actually were from that kind of neck of the woods near Mount Washington. Um, and we knew that we wanted to do something about Mount Washington and about the people that made that mountain um, so special. Um, I came across Search and Rescue, and I came across this group that we feature in the film. Um, the Mountain Rescue Service are incredible. They're all volunteer. They're not paid. They're all local guides. Um, and as we saw in the film, they go out daily uh, to kind of risk their lives to help people. Um, and we actually set out making a very different film than the one you saw today. We thought we were making a film specifically about the organization, but then when we learn about the 1982 rescue that you see featured in the film, and um, I somehow convinced Hugh to talk to me. <laughs> um, he's a very, very busy man, an incredible human. Um, that just kind of shifted everything for us, and we realized that actually there was a bigger story here. Um, and there's something so special about that rescue, obviously, sadly, uh, but Dow perished in that rescue. It's the only time that's happened that a volunteer rescue has passed away. Um, but it's obviously such an incredibly hopeful story as well ultimately because as you saw at the end um, Hugh Herr has done amazing things with his life since as is Jeff Batzer his partner um, and they both of them remain really close to Albert's family. So. Yeah to turn I was really taken aback by to turn something becoming a double amputee and pivot yeah. and then be a leader of the industry and be uh, an inspiration to so many yeah. I mean that's very few can even do half that. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think what really struck me is how everyone in the film didn't want the film to be about them. Um, it was kind of uh, interesting to me that even the Mountain Rescue Service, they, I think, were hesitant to begin with because they are aware that they themselves are part of a bigger patchwork of folks that do amazing things daily. Um, and they wanted to make sure in the film, as we've tried to, that they're an incredible volunteer organization. They get a lot of focus because of the extreme work that they do. But there's a lot of people locally that do incredible work there as well. And it was no also nice to hear the, the echo of kind of like what you, the echo chamber of what we hear when people do uh, get lost. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the, the general public just says, you know, they shouldn't be out there in the right. first place. But it was, it was good to hear even the, the rescuers, they're like, no, you should go out and you should push the limits to the, the point where you feel as comfortable. It's all about getting out there and making that connection. For sure, yeah. and I think like judgment was something that we were really curious about because um, in some ways the guys that go out and rescue people know better than anyone how dangerous it can be and you presume that they would be in that position of judgment almost. Um, but it was the absolute opposite and I'm so happy we included that quote at the end because yeah. I think humor and do short documentaries which some of the other filmmakers did so beautifully is so important um, and it's really I think speaks to how they feel that this shouldn't deter you if anything just you know think twice maybe about how you're going outside and make sure you're with people who you know know and can guide you but also I think so much of the the danger actually comes from people being embarrassed and too like I guess shameful about uh, needing some support and I think the more judgment that people feel the less likely they are to kind of reach out and um, you know get the guidance that they need yeah. so yeah another theme that we've uh, are getting more and more accustomed especially this week is rewilding of areas. We uh, were lucky enough to watch Wildlife on opening night about um, all the good work that um, Chris Tompkins and uh, 
Doc Tompkins, who passed away, uh, are doing down in Chile. But rewilding kind of touches on Yuba, and you know we're seeing like the the battles that are existing. Maybe an Obi. Too. I'd love to get Obi's uh, kind of perspective. I know it's near and dear to your heart, uh, a cause of oh, true. just the rewilding and, and watching Yuba and and seeing what they're doing with the with the river. Yeah, indeed, rewilding is sort of a problematic word that's going to take a little bit to unpack. I know we're <laughs> going to go there, right? Because because semantics. Yeah, even even with that prefix re, right? Yeah. Restoration, yeah. Uh, revolution, like the, a return to something when in fact we see novel ecosystems uh, emerging all the time. I, I I I just have to say, wow, your films are so beautiful. I, gosh, it's hard to, for me to talk about. It feels like. Angelica's. It's like, the, it's like this, the, the. There. Hello. Hands, can you hear me? <laughs> All right. Mic problems. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Musical the, mics. The, the future is democratic and democratic written across the land, right? And, and, and that was a story of, of some spirit of access and equality. Right now, you know, my work writing these big books on California nature, uh, really democratizing the landscape, not just about the superlatives of California, like the redwoods or the Yosemites or the, you know, it's, 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 about, it's about where to go, uh, where to go hiking in San Joaquin County or San Benito County. San Fernando, I mean, San like, Fernando. Yeah, yeah, beautiful hikes right at your back, the back of your doorstep. Yeah, I'm into that. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. like, I, I'm always asked the question, like, what's your favorite place to hike? It's like, well, where are you? It's like, <laughs> California is beautiful everywhere across it. You know, so now, so now in my role, I'm often find myself as sort of policy translator. And right now we have the 30 by 30 state law, which is really protecting for the purposes of both the co-equal purposes of both biodiversity and access. Right? This is this is this is a resource for all of us when when we're talking about public land specifically. Now there are things like the Forest Service lands, grazing lands, for example, those don't qualify. Okay, so so we need to get 30% of these lands because more than half of California is actually designated public land. Your land, my land, our land. Um, but but what actually qualifies and what doesn't for these very um, rigorous guidelines uh, for for biodiversity pr protection, but really for access to get out there. I mean, I'm always attempting to, in my work, to, to see my own biases and to, and, to, and to disarm my own voice as far as like, even there was a little bit, you, you touched on sort of neurodivergence at the beginning in, in your work with, 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 with those, like, I was so moved and like, wow, you know, how inspiring it is for me to like open up my heart more to 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 uh, more an inclusive voice for all of us. Isn't that the way of the future? Yes. Absolutely. I think everyone would say. Um, I'm curious to know if you got any with with Yuba any any pushback. You know, there's always hurdles in in all filmmaking, but with that film specifically. Um, yeah, um, so that film, Yuba is the Heart, was made in a partnership with the South Yuba River Citizens League, or CIRCLE as it's known, who also run the Wild and Scenic Film Festival up in Nevada City, uh, which is a great fellow environmental film fest. Um, they commissioned me to uh, produce and direct that film, and it was for their 40th anniversary, which is a tall order, because they've done 40 years of very incredible work, and there are a lot of very passionate people who have a lot of very passionate opinions about what should or should not be included in a film. And I think ultimately working with that community and working with the organization, uh, we decided to really make it a film more about like a love letter to the river. You know, a community that's both both loved loves a river and is loved by a river. It's a reciprocal relationship that is innately inseparable. Um, so really focusing on that allowed us to create a lens in which we could consider characters who kind of fit that voice. You know, thinking about, of course, like first and foremost, the Nisanon tribe at the forefront, including Shelley Covert in that conversation, including a board member, including the watershed science director, and having those those folks kind of stand up on that pedestal to you know represent that community was a, was a tall order. But the pushback I, I mainly received was just yeah people's excitement about yeah. wanting to participate, which is always difficult. Like no angry scowls at the gas station, nothing like that. No, nothing okay. like that. <laughs> okay. No, no. <laughs> um, little interesting side note. I know on 109 Below, I read somewhere, and I don't know, maybe you can uh, tell me if this is true, but like a lot of the, uh, the shots that were recreated 
it was shot in the middle of summertime. Is that because I know with the temperature during filming, it actually got 109 below, correct? Yeah, it was yeah. Like cold. It, I felt bad because I came up with the idea for the film, but I didn't go and shoot it. My team were there, and I didn't oh, how plan. Can, yeah, when, it, when it's really cold, you're like, I'm back in the studio. I didn't, okay. I didn't foresee that it was going to be the coldest temperature ever recorded in North America yeah. when I sent them there. Um, <laughs> but uh, they did. not Yeah, so the same week that we were there, it hit 109 minus uh, 109 uh, with a wind chill, uh, which is very cold. I hear from them. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, yeah the, I got sent some some funny messages that day. But um, no, so they. Um, the the funny thing about making the film is, as I said, we kind of planned to make one film, and then when we had the kind of Hugh her story component, we'd already filmed, so we had to figure out, you know, how could we really evocatively bring that story to life. Um, cut to it is 105 degrees in Los Angeles, and we on a stage we're trying to figure out how to shoot some of the kind of colder recreation stuff when they kind of it looks like they're on the mountain. Uh, it was not cold that day, so I also got some texts from people that day as well. Um, so we went so all climates I think yeah. to make this happen. Movie magic, we love it. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to ask uh, Obi in terms of when we, we talk about uh, the, the, the spaces and the connection. We were talking about earlier before we uh, came in for the first film block. How my, my my routine? I like to get my toes in the sand every day, no matter if it's raining, cold. But in throughout your travels and, and all the all the times you've ha had to speak for different symposiums, you know, what's the what's the one thing that you find really connects everyone? To nature, and they're like, "What's the what's the the binding binding fiber?" Well, isn't it interesting this this idea of healing when you're outside, when 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 you can talk to your grandmother, you feel her out there. I feel that too with mine, you know. And and there's this connectivity. I suppose it's written into our own bodies. It defies even the word nature because it's written across our own physiology. As you're stepping into the woods, for example, the amount of life out there in the biosphere, in those natural habitat places, the the amount of microorganisms, for example, that you your body is is able to, is not only able to take in, but there's a nutritive element there. When you're stepping onto a forest floor, the amount of fungal spores, with every single breath, it's hundreds of thousands of fungal spores going into your body. You know, and that makes me ask fundamental questions of, so what is nature then? Am I, am, am I not then? part of that, the word nature begins to dissolve when it's no longer everything out there, but it's something inside of me. And your body responds to it with greater health, with, with lower blood pressure. Your nervous system transforms into something like a, like a harmony system. <laughs> right? Let's get rid of the word nervous. Let's, let, let us, let us uh, you know, begin to conceive of a, then on any time scale into the future, we are facing it with some modicum of peace, some, some bit of groundedness, full battery. You know, let us use that metaphor because it is yeah. real and it is, it, is, it is intimate and it is very powerful. Yeah. And you feel that too, right? Angela, right? When you get out there, I have to, I mean, it's, it becomes addictive. We all know this, right? I have friends that once you do your first 14 or in Colorado, they're like, I got to do them all. <laughs> so I'd be remiss if I didn't ask what, yeah, do you have a, do you have a hike or a climb uh, something on the, on the horizon where you're like, okay, I will eventually check that off. It'll go from like bucket list to checklist. Um, so I guess my favorite mountain or peak. Yeah. I don't know. So the one, the, uh, Peak challenge that we did in the film, that's my favorite. It also has a lot to do with like who you're hiking with. And I love them all. They make me better. And <laughs> and yeah, I, but by the way, we realized you, you, you rolled in with the deepest posse we have ever seen. This is hands down the biggest. They're not even all here. <laughs> really? You roll even deeper than that? I'm, I'm impressed. Cool. Very impressed. I, I just, I recently created a reel and it was from January 2023. We didn't know any of, we didn't know each other. And now they're a family, they go on trips together, they help each other, like, this is awesome, like nature brothers together. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And if I may, I think too, like, part of what I've been learning and, learning and unlearning about the production of this film, work with Angelica, is that 
you know, spending time outside, uh, outside, whether that be hiking Five Peaks or at Griffith Park, a city park, like mm -hmm. spending time outside is is a privilege, right? And there's a lot of barriers to access, um, whether that be transportation or equipment or time, right? Like, Angelica, how many jobs are you currently working? Um, I have three. <laughs> three, and you're um, going back to school? And I'm gonna go back to school. Yeah. Um. And she's like leading free hikes with this group of women. She just went to Kilimanjaro with a bunch of them earlier this year. Yeah. Did it. Oh, she was. One of us here. So a, a lot of it. We made it. It's just you know thinking about and um, what we consider spending time outside how we can encourage folks who have those barriers of access like that doesn't have to be this national park or this national monument it can be griffith park or other city parks that are closer to them and there is public transportation like buses or bikes that can kind of get us there and also encouraging you know our legislatures to increase that access and funding towards it as well um, so that's just one thing i think i've really taken away from this project and working with you from this experience <laughs> yes you know, it's um, interesting is, you know, things like hiking and skiing and surfing and all, uh, mountain biking, all these outdoor t activities, I should say, generally used to be relegated to a very small group. Mm. And people that went through, you know, they went on these trips, and you know, they, we call it fear bonding, and you have this experience, and it's, it's great to see the camaraderie. It doesn't have to be where you're on the edge of a, a, of a flute like Jeremy Jones in Alaska with your friends. You, it can, just on a hike, that camaraderie, and it's evident yeah. that that give back and that get back <laughs> is so uh, so alive uh, well and well with your group so thank you for that for, for sharing <laughs> Angelica. thank you for having yeah. us can I ask uh, uh, you know there's so many things that you get from your film but what what's one big takeaway that you hope someone after watching it that they walk away with watching your story Well, I'm very passionate about representing outdoors, so I just, that's me up there. That can be you up there and out there. You don't need to have the fancy gear. Like, I started with Walmart stuff or Costco, and it got me started. And every hike, like, I just fell in love more and more, and, and I was doing more miles, and I'm like, this feels incredible. Like, everyone should feel this. So I just want them to know that they matter, and... They, they can be doing these things too. Like, I don't know. We can applaud that, absolutely. <laughs> Angelica, thank you for sharing your story. Palmer, beautiful films. Thank you. Obi, as always. Sarah, thank you, 109 Below. <laughs> Big round of applause for everyone. Um, the good news is, you guys, we're gonna go right into, I think a, a quick little couple minute break, um, but then we're gonna be going right into our next uh, film block. No, which, no break. What's that? No break. No break. <laughs> no break. Wow. <laughs> Triple overtime. Okay. No All right. So thank you again.